ਭਈ ਅਕਾਲ ਕੀ ਤਬੀ ਚਲਾਇਓ ਸਭ ਸੇਖਨ ਕੋ ਹੁਕਮ ਹੈ ਗੁਰੂ ਮਾਨਿਓ ਗ੍ਰੰਥ ਗੁਰੂ ਗ੍ਰੰਥ ਜੀ ਮਾਨਿਓ ਪ੍ਰਗਟ ਗੁਰਾਂ ਕੀ From the timeless one comes the directive in accordance with which was established the Khalsa Pant To all six there comes the call acknowledge the grant as the guru for it is the manifest body of the masters yea with pure hearts seek the lord in his word bole so now these worshipers here at the gurdwara a seat place of worship in toronto share something unique with six worldwide it is 1430 pages of scriptures called the guru granth sahib and is omnipresent not only over festivals and ceremonies like this one but also over the daily life of sikhs like the bible for the christians the torah for the jews the quran for the muslims or the vedas for the hindus the guru granth sahib contains the principles and teachings of the sikh religion but very few people outside of the sikh faith are familiar with guru granth sahib what are its teachings what is its history who compiled the scriptures and what is its significance in daily sikh life this documentary will answer these questions and explore the fascinating world of the guru granth sahib The six scriptures or Guru Granth Sahib as it is called is unique in the world. Unlike other holy books, for six it represents much more than a compilation of scriptures. Not only does it embody the spirit and philosophy of the Sikh religion, but it is considered to be the guru in perpetuity or spiritual guide that is a poetic celebration of God and humanity. It is also considered a sacred personification of the wisdom of the Sikh gurus and God's supremacy. Every morning in the Gurudwara, the Guru Granth Sahib is taken from a room where it is kept overnight with great reverence. It is ceremoniously placed on a raised platform, a palki, with a canopy installed overhead to maintain the sanctity of Guru Granth Sahib. A member of the congregation attends to the Granth, waving over it a whisk called char during the service as a sovereign. Six do not worship the scriptures itself, but its word revealed through its hymns called Shabad. Throughout its 1430 pages, the Granth Sahib contains 6000 hymns of devotion to God, reflections on the divine cosmos, and visions of higher life. It calls upon humankind to attain spiritual peace, serenity, and liberation from the cycle of life and death, a state known as mukti. Considered to be union with God, it also contains the fundamental beliefs of Sikhism. that there is only one god that all human beings are equal that all religions must be respected that women and men are equal that it is good to serve others and share the fruits of one's labor with others but how did these beliefs arise to understand this we must first look at the beginnings of the sikh religion Every new religious movement is shaped by existing faiths and Sikhism is no exception. The development of Sikh traditions cannot be understood in a vacuum, but only in the context of the religious universe of India, in whose history it was an active participant. This was a religious universe marked by lively interaction and debate between different groups. 
Thus, the Sikh traditions which developed from Guru Nanak's teachings was faced with the problem of defining itself against the existing Muslim Sufi, Hindu Naat, and Bhakti traditions in the Punjab. Throughout his works, Guru Nanak made a very clear distinction between his own teachings and practices and the teachings and practices of other paths. While drawing upon various linguistic resources and traditions as he saw fit, Guru Nanak emphatically declared his independence from other thought forms of his day and tried to kindle the fire of autonomy and courage in those who claimed to be his disciples. Guru Nanak, the founder of Sikhism, was born in 1469 in Punjab, India. At that time, India was experiencing great social, political and religious unrest. Most people were followers of the Hindu religion. The country was being invaded by Mughals from the northwest and the invaders were plundering and looting the masses. Guru Nanak, who was a visionary, mystic and philosopher, was unhappy about the prevalent religious practices. He showed a keen interest in learning about God and spirituality. He is said to have experienced a revelation at the age of 30 while bathing in a river. God gave him a cup of nectar and charged him with the mission. Go into the world to pray and teach mankind how to pray. Be not sullied by the ways of the world. Let your life be one of praise of the word, charity, ablution, service and prayer. Let this be your life's mission. Nanak disappeared for three days. Upon his return, he remained silent for one day and then announced, There is neither Hindu nor Muslim. He proclaimed, There is only one God. He is the supreme truth. Nanak emphasized that goals of Hinduism and Islam were the same and preached a peaceful coexistence between these two faiths. During his lifetime, he traveled and visited the holy lands of the Middle East, Tibet, Central Asia, Sri Lanka, and all through India, gaining adherents and setting up centers of Sikh worship. He was a popular poet who often sang his own works in Indian classical ragas, accompanied by the rabab, a stringed instrument, played by his companion, Bai Mardana. Nanak contributed 947 compositions to the Guru Granth Sahib, ideas and beliefs that form the core values of Sikhism. Nanak believed it was important to teach by example and decided to start a succession of gurus who would practice Sikh teachings. Nine gurus were to follow him. By the beginning of the 17th century, a separate Sikh religious community had formed, consisting of Nanak's disciples and the succeeding gurus. Each of the ten human gurus made significant contributions to the Guru Granth Sahib. The second guru, Guru Angad Dev, developed Punjabi script and made copies of Guru Nanak's work, along with that of other saints matching the Sikh teachings in Punjabi. This was a common spoken language used by ordinary people, which made the scriptures accessible to everyone. Guru Angad Dev added 63 compositions to the grant. Guru Amar Das, the third guru, opposed the caste system and sati ritual in which women used to burn on the funeral pyre of their dead spouses, which had created inequality in Indian society. He also encouraged people of both genders and different castes to sit together in the langar, a Sikh dining hall where people share free food. Guru Amar Das also added 907 hymns to the Guru Granth Sahib, besides the works of saints belonging to other religions whose teachings were similar to those of Guru Nanak. The fourth Guru, Guru Ram Das, founded the city of Amritsar, he contributed 638 hymns to the Granth, including the Lava, a central part of the Sikh marriage ceremony. Guru Arjan Dev was the fifth Guru. He undertook the enormous task of collecting and compiling the writings of the first four Gurus, his own works and the writings of Muslim and Hindu saints. 
by Gurdas, who was also an accomplished writer, transcribed all the scriptures. To ensure the purity of the work, Guru Arjan Dev had to distinguish between genuine and spurious compositions. He sent aids to distant places that Guru Nanak had visited during his four journeys. The resulting anthology, known as the Adi Granth, or the Primary Granth, is where Sikh teachings and faith found its expression. Guru Arjan Dev also completed the Harimandir Sahib, now known as the Golden Temple. The Adi Granth was installed in the Golden Temple in 1604 AD. The 6th, 7th, and 8th Gurus did not add any writings to the Grant. The 9th Guru, Teg Bahadur, and his son Guru Gobind Singh were prolific writers of religious verses. Guru Gobind Singh added 59 hymns of the 9th Guru and one of his own shloka in the definitive edition of the Grant, which is still used today. Guru Gobind Singh was the 10th and the last of the human Gurus. Rather than pass on his guruship to another person, he instead passed it on to the scriptures, hence the name Guru Granth Sahib as the eternal guru to revere for all times to come. In addition to the compositions of the Sikh gurus, the Guru Granth Sahib also contains the work of 15 divinely inspired Hindu saints, Muslim Sufis, 11 bards, and four Sikhs belonging to different castes from all over India. It embodies five centuries of religious, philosophical, and cultural history from the 12th to the 17th century. It is perhaps the only scripture in the world which sanctifies the writings of people who did not subscribe to the faith, but believed in one God and brotherhood of humankind. In that sense, it is the only universal or non-denominational scripture that exists. Despite being compiled with writings over a span of centuries, the Guru Granth Sahib has a unity of language and thought. The script used in the Granth is called Gurmukhi, meaning from the mouth of the Guru. The language used is a mixture of Punjabi, the spoken language of the people of the Punjab, and Old Hindi, commonly used in Indian medieval and romantic poetry called Sunt Basha. Some of the other dialects of northern India were also used. The Gurus believed that divine worship through music was the best way of achieving communion with God. And they knew that music and rhythm deeply affect the human soul. In the Grant, the major portion of poetry is arranged in different ragas and is meant to be sung. Ragas are usually sung according to the season or the time of day or night. Guru Grant Sahib is arranged in 31 major ragas. There are 29 mixed varieties of ragas also to be found in Guru Granth Sahib. Professional musicians called ragis sing the hymns during services. Singing of hymns is called kirtan. Kirtan is performed accompanied by drums or tabla, harmonium and other musical instruments. There is no restriction to perform kirtan. Any male or female from the congregation can also participate.
The teachings of the Guru Granth guide Sikhs both in ceremony and in their daily lives. The creed of the Guru Granth, uncompromising monotheism, comes in a prelude to the work called the Japji Sahib, written by Guru Nanak. Japji is the most important of the five banis or daily prayers that devout Sikhs recite each day. Guru Nanak encouraged Sikhs to meditate and glorify God's name and greatness in what he called the ambrosial hours of fragrant dawn. There is one supreme being, the eternal reality. He is the creator. Without fear, devoid of enmity, he is immortal, never incarnated, self-existent, known by grace through the Guru. Worship him. Prominent in the writings of the Guru Granth is the extreme importance of equality. Let no man be proud because of his caste, for the man who grasps God in his heart, he, no other, is the true believer. So, O oh fools, be not vainglorious about your caste and status. The Grant teaches that a husband and wife should have a true relationship. They are not truly husband and wife whose bodies merely come together. Only they are truly wedded when two bodies have one soul. The gurus gave equal status to women in Sikhism. Why should we consider women inferior and unlucky when from woman are born leaders and rulers? From woman alone is born a woman. Without woman there can be no human birth. The notion of karma, the fate of an individual, based on past deeds performed, is also raised in the Grant. Writes Guru Arjan Dev, the fifth Guru. <laughs> Sow thyself the seed, consume the produce thereof. As he sows, so does he reap. Seva, which means to serve others, is another main principle of Sikhism as taught in the Guru Granth. Guru Nanak believed that it is only through devoted service in this world that one may find a divine resting place with God. Sikhs today are taught to donate their time, skills, and money to help others, regardless of how lowly the task might be. Today, 
the Guru Granth Sahib has a central place in Sikh worship, whether at the temple or at home. Some Sikh families set aside a room in their home where the Guru Granth is kept. Random passages are read along with morning or bedtime prayers. Sikh worship can take place anywhere. Little ritual is used and no priest or official is needed to lead the worship. Any Sikh man or woman may lead the ceremony, sing hymns, or speak in the presence of the Granth Sahib. Vaheguru ji ka khalsa, Vaheguru ji ki fateh Bule so nihal, sat sri akal As a mark of respect for the Guru Granth Sahib, people cover their heads and take off their shoes when entering the temple. Worshippers also bow and touch the ground with their forehead before they sit down. Worship consists of kirtan, readings from the Granth Sahib and prayers. At the end of every service, the prashad, a holy sweet sacrament made with flour, sugar and butter, is distributed to all. This is a sign of the Guru's blessing and to show that all are equal. The service, known as Diwan, is usually followed by a meal called langar in a common dining hall. The Guru Granth Sahib also officiates during the Sikh marriage ceremony called Anand Karaj, or Ceremony of Bliss. The bride and groom sit in front of the Guru Granth Sahib. Prayers are said, and the bride and groom are reminded of their duties to each other and of their obligations to society. They show their assent to the marriage by bowing before the Guru Granth Sahib. Between them, they hold a pala, a scarf which symbolizes the soft but strong bond between the husband and wife. They circle the scriptures four times. Sajas by Mille Gopala, Nanak Sajapatine, Sultamala Panjava, Gurka Sundra. On special occasions, the Guru Granth is recited in its entirety by a relay of readers. Non-stop reciting the Granth's 6,000 verses takes 48 hours and is called the Akand Pat. Another special reading, known as the Septa Pat, is done in seven days, or Sej Pat, taking any amount of time. Farida Moteida Banna if there is a death in the family, the Guru Granth Sahib commands the Sikhs to accept God's will, avoid the showing of grief, and to find comfort in reading scripture. The Sikhs do not believe that death is the end. They believe a person's soul merges with God. If it does not, it is born again. This is called the transmigration of souls. The Guru Granth Sahib, page 793. The dawn of a new day is the message of a sunset. Earth is not the permanent home. <laughs> Gauri aaye paye 